Welcome into the Locked On Red Sox podcast. I'm your host, Massachusetts Powers Team Insider, Jake Ignazuski. And I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. But in this episode, we have a very exclusive interview for you with 2004 World Series champions, Mike Timlin and Mike Myers. I had the opportunity to speak with both of them at the Sharon Timlin Foundation 5K event and ask them a little bit about their experiences being on that 2004 World Series team and ask them a little bit about what they've been up to during their post-baseball career. Let's get into the interviews. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Before we get into the Mike Timlin interview, I just want to take a second to talk to you about our next partner. And this is something that I literally use each and every single day. That's Athletic Greens because I don't know about you, but there's times where I wake up with a little bit of a stomach ache. There's times where I don't have tons of appetite in the morning. And I've always had some bad gut health. And Athletic Greens has been the perfect way for me to fix this issue and also optimize my immune system. So Really, all it is is one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, and you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and antigens to start your day right. And it's a special blend of ingredients that not only supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and energy aging and it's pretty crazy so i i was watching the uh interview with you and tim after the 2007 world series the emotional interview of you obviously saying how strong of a guy he is talk a little about a little bit about your guys's friendship you know tim and i we we became really close i mean we played against each other for a long time um but when i finally was you know blessed to come here and be on the red sox we just we hit it off i mean it was just it was almost natural so it's like we'd known each other and played with each other for years even though we were on opposite sides for a long time. But, you know, Tim and I, we love to hunt together. We love to hang out. I mean, he's a heck of a lot better golfer than I am, but we like to do that too. Um, but, you know, like I said, it was just a natural friendship that just became so much stronger over the years. And he, I, all I had to do was mention, you know, that we did this race. He's like, oh, I'll come out. So he, and he's been here almost every year, unless he has a prior commitment. That's amazing. And, you know, thinking back on your Red Sox career, what, what were some of your favorite Red Sox moments? Oh, my gosh. Um, well, obviously went in the 2004 um, and then 2007. But, you know, we, we had some great teams. Um, I think my first year in 2003, learning what, what baseball meant to the area of New England, that is a moment that, you know, you just don't forget. You know, when you become a Red Sox, it, it seems to just stay in your blood. And, you know, we have Mike Myers over there who played for the Yankees but still comes and does this because, you know, he knows what it means to this area. I mean, he's a, he's a fantastic mind. He's a fantastic baseball player. But he knows the passion of the, of the game up here, and it's, cra- it's crazy. And, and outside of this amazing event, how else can people support the Sharon Timlin Foundation? Well, they can, you know, they can go to the angelfund.org, and it's on the, the homepage there. And then the Sharon Timlin Run org is another homepage, that they can, and they can donate there if they want. Um, otherwise, you know, uh, you know, there's a squirrel run. There's a, there's a lot of different things that the Angel Fund covers, and they try to you know obviously make it fun and you know have have something for your donation. And you know, obviously we have, we appreciate it, but the whole end goal is to end ALS. I mean, it doesn't matter if we're out here, you know, for a run, painting faces, whatever the heck we're doing, golf tournaments, whatever, you know, it's all, all the money goes to the research to end this terrible disease. And that's the whole, that's the whole goal. That's amazing. Keep doing some amazing work. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate it. Definitely make sure to go and support the Sharon Timlin Foundation and all the amazing things that they do to help find a cure for ALS. But before we get into the Mike Myers interview, I just want to take a second to talk to you about Bet Online, which is your number one source for all your betting needs in sports info. And you can find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball. 
Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on your favorite sports and events. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts. And we also have a very important favor to ask you. We put together a survey so we can learn more about the listeners like you to make your favorite Locked On podcast even better. So this is an opportunity for you to tell us what you like and what you don't like about Locked On Podcast. So go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't take very long, and everybody that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards to take our audience survey. So go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey. We greatly appreciate your help. Now let's get into the Mike Myers interview. Joining the Red Sox in 2004, I was curious. Like, at what moment did you realize that this team was destined to win a championship? I think when uh, we got to the last couple weeks of the season, we couldn't miss on anything. The hitters were in stride, doing their thing. Bill Miller was in great form. Defense was outstanding with Minkavich and uh, Pokey Reese. And uh, I just thought everybody was healthy. Starting pitching was healthy going into the playoffs. So I thought we had a good chance to do something special and. It was fun to actually see it through. You know, outside obviously winning the, winning the championship, getting past the Yankees, what was some of your favorite moments from that 2004 season? Uh, everything. Getting traded over here, getting welcomed with open arms by everybody uh, in the organization. Probably, you know, coming back, sweeping the Angels in the first round. Uh, coming back from the Yankees after that bad beat we took in game three. And the... Uh, Finishing off at Yankee Stadium with something special. Wakefield being on the mound there to celebrate where things weren't so fortunate for him at the end of the 03 season. And then, uh, you know, going into St. Louis, it was just like it, the World Series was great to have the sweep, but it almost ended too fast because you couldn't cherish every little thing about it. But the celebration afterwards, having this city go absolutely nuts, it was fun to watch and uh, be a part of walking downtown the next couple of days afterwards and it was pretty special. And then lastly, what were some of your favorite experiences with Terry Francona as your manager? Probably playing cribbage with him before the game in the, in the uh, locker room, um, joking around about little things here and there. So it was more off the, off the field, away from the before and after the game type of things that were really special with Terry. He's such an amazing manager, and it's, it's amazing to see how much success he's still having. Success, and for Cleveland to keep selling off pieces that uh, it looks like they're always going to rebuild. He figures out a way to get that team to win, and they're in contention to uh, try to win the Central in the AL this year. So he's he's an incredible person. People love him, respect him, and they play hard for him. He knows that we're going to push buttons. He knows when to lay off and just leave guys alone, but he always defends his players, and that's the best thing about him. And then last and final thing, now you're living in Colorado. What's some of your favorite things to do now during retirement? Golf. That's pretty much what I love to do is just golf, 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 See, uh, watch my kids grow up, be with, the, be with them as much as I possibly could when I was got done playing. And uh, just we got a lot of friendships and a good, fr- good base out there. But we get all four seasons out there. I absolutely love Colorado. It's gorgeous. And, uh, yeah, I don't think I'll ever move from there. And now when you, Mike, and Tim go out, who usually wins, wins those matches? Oh, I'll beat him in golf. But when, but if he ta- were ever to take me hunting, I think I'd shoot and miss every time, and he would knock it. He would hit the animal every time. So there's a little bit of a different. I love it. Really appreciate the time, man. All right. I hope you did enjoy both of those interviews and was able to learn a little bit behind the scenes of their thoughts of their experience on the 2004 season. And honestly, I wish I was able to get a video interview, but it was only audio and he- can't really complain when you have the opportunity to interview those types of guys. So greatly appreciate everybody tuning in to this episode of the Locked on Red Sox podcast. If you have not yet, make sure to subscribe on whatever audio platform that you're listening to. We also post the video version on YouTube. But Monday through Friday, we're posting Red Sox content to help you guys stay updated about your favorite team. But to even say even more updated, follow us over there on Twitter. It's LO underscore Red Sox. You can follow myself on Twitter as well. It's at Jake Iggy. Also follow my co-host Lauren. It's at La La La. That's three laws. Lauren with four R's. And also check out the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft. 
that Locked On Podcast has made. So search now for Ultimate NBA Mock Draft and get over 50 insiders, the Odyssey sports experts, the draft experts of the Locked On NBA Big Board. And there's five episodes of the NBA Mock Draft underway. So make the NBA Mock Draft your second listen today. Go over and check that out. They do a great job of giving you all the updates before the NBA draft. But as always, we greatly appreciate everybody tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. And make sure to check out this week's Farm Report. It's definitely going to be a great interview. But thank you so much for listening. We'll end it how we always end it. Let's go Sox. Peace.